The work of Karama and Ikram is so critical. Karama has existed for quite some time, and they have focused on human rights and especially women's rights from a legal perspective, and uh, they maintain that focus. But they also bring into that focus the work of conflict resolution, uh, such as uh, the kind of work I do myself, where the focus is not necessarily about legal elements, but also about the social and cultural and uh, psychological elements of peace and conflict. And, uh, and we relate that to gender uh, factors and women issues. Ikram has a, a very direct mandate related to supporting women in times of divorce uh, and they're also helping marriages in general, not just women. And uh, to try to deal with the issues of divorce and to do divorce prevention and to help people to live healthy life while married, not miserable life. Maybe the old classic way of thinking of marriage was keep the marriage going no matter what, even when everyone is miserable, the, the, the husbands, the wives, the children. And I think now we are seeing a shift from that. Uh, Ikram is not advocating for keep stay married no matter what, but instead stay married in a healthy way and let us work on what can we do to help to make the marriage productive and healthy. And, and that's what I see happening with, uh, between Ikram and Karama. And I am honored, I have to say, to be part of that and to offer my expertise in peace and conflict resolution to support uh, their objectives. Workshops related to conflict in general and uh, to marriage in particular and when we add to it the Islamic dimension or working with, uh, with Muslim communities are really critical for many reasons. Number one, of course, it is no secret that uh, we are seeing an increase in the number of divorces. We also are seeing uh, that uh, even the marriages that seem to stay together are miserable, not necessarily happy. Many people are coming and talking about how unhappy they are in their marriages. And uh, when you add to that some of the fundamentalism that is growing in, in many parts of the world, including here in the U.S., and some of the conservative ideas about the gender roles and uh, what comes with that, I think that we have a lot of problems. More marriages are failing now, I think, because the social structures that uh, used to provide support for marriages uh, have not adjusted enough yet. I think also that um, uh, many young people don't, uh, are not equipped well enough with the proper tools to, uh, to cope with marriage and to know how to deal with challenges when they happen. And that's why they seem to run away once they, uh, at the first instance of feeling that something is going wrong. Another factor that, uh, of course, I cannot claim that I am an expert on, but I think affluence, believe it or not. I mean, we as humanity in general are more affluent than we, we used to be. In other words, you don't have to be dependent on somebody's income to survive. And when you have two people in marriage, each of them has some income that they can live well off. Uh, it, it makes it easier, I think, for people to say, oh, I'll just move on and I will live by myself and I'll be okay. Uh, so that uh, lack of interdependence or reduction in interdependence that was a necessity for families to survive together uh, is making it, I think, more possible for people to feel that they can move on their own and get a divorce. Economic pressure can be a big factor for some families, but also it can be uh, uh, patterns and uh, ways people are used to do things and when they get into marriage they find that the other side doesn't have the same patterns or don't understand their patterns of doing things uh, or they fall into the trap of like they have seen always that fight, uh, if a conflict means you have to fight and yell and win at the expense of the other and uh, so every time there's a conflict they fall into that pattern which makes it difficult for the other to understand Another big factor, especially here in America, is uh, cultural differences. And people here come from all walks of life with different expectations of what is good, what is bad, what is right, what is wrong. And that can play a big role. And then there is just the basic uh, personality differences uh, between people. Uh, that uh, some of them may 
find themselves in a situation where just the likings of uh, somebody is not what they like or some um, uh, preferences are not what they uh, prefer and they clash over this and then they cannot get out of it. One of the things that we suggest uh, in general is just you don't always have to react to negative behavior. I mean, somebody in a, in a situation and they attack you physically, or not physically, I mean verbally, or say something negative or whatever, uh, it doesn't mean that, well, I have now to answer back in the same way. Sometimes not to, to reciprocate the negativity can be actually very useful. That's one. Another is to, as I use in my workshops, to emphasize some of the religious mandates for behaving in a kind and decent way in the time of conflict and to appreciate that this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted from us to do in times of conflict, using ma'roof, using ihsan and to find a way to, to operationalize this in our life and to get more people to appreciate uh, that this is the right way to do it for yourself and for the other person with you in the conflict situation. A third approach can be to bring the right parties who can help secondary parties, relatives, friends, whoever you think can be useful. But here you have to be very careful because some people come in a conflict and they make things more difficult. So you got to be careful to bring the people who you think will actually uh, make a positive change. And then ultimately, of course, you can always seek uh, professional help. You can go to a, a, a counselor, you can go to a mediator, uh, somebody who is professionally trained to know how to deal with conflict situations. It may be very good to try uh, such approach. Uh, the negative uh, stigma about seeking outside help is something that I would say it's not necessarily the case when it comes to people growing up in the West, in America or Europe or so. It is more in cultures in the Middle East and Asia and, and, and Africa to some extent we are not comfortable with the idea of uh, professional help from a therapist or from a mediator. Um, and that is because we still have strong social structures and we think that the social structures we have and social networks of relatives and extended family should help us to solve problems and, uh, and you should be able to seek support within those social networks. In other words, you don't need to hang your dirty laundry out and instead it needs to be contained within the family or the immediate social network. But to take the, the, the problems out and put them, take them to a therapist or so is still not very understood back in the cultures uh, in the Middle East and Asia and Africa. Now, living here in America, I think uh, you have, of course, large numbers of Muslims here who come from those backgrounds and they still carry that stigma with them. And, but the, what they don't realize is you don't have the same social network here that you have back home. And you have younger generation growing up here. They know nothing but to go to a therapist. And for them, that is the right way to deal with a conflict situation. And we need to find a balance between the two. Uh, the stigma about you going to a therapist is something that um, I hope that we, we can overcome here, in, uh, in especially living in America because we don't have the, the, the skills in the community. We don't have the uncle and the grandfather and the grandmother that we have back home who can actually come and intervene in a positive way and have influence on people. Uh, so uh, we should actually encourage more people to seek support uh, via uh, professionals. Uh, and hopefully the professionals can be uh, people who are trained in approaches that uh, are cognizant of our cultural differences and our, our uniqueness and also our religious uh, uniqueness. That word ma'roof um, is uh, a very deep word actually when you think about it from an Arabic linguistic perspective. Um, the word ma'roof, uh, it means, and the way it is used in the Quran, is to refer to acting in a kind way to people, uh, especially in time of conflict. And it is repeated almost all, all, always whenever we are talking about conflict. 
And uh, the word ma'roof has a deeper meaning than simply do a kind uh, thing to somebody. Ma'roof has a connection to the culture, to the traditions, and the shared understanding of people. And it is even in the beauty of this word when we use it in our uh, Arabic in different cultures. Uh, it always has a beautiful meaning to it. And it appeals to the goodness inside people. And uh, I looked in the Quran and I found that the word ma'roof is repeated often whenever there is a description of conflict situations, uh, such as in Surah Al-Baqarah, especially between verses 226 and 242. In the span of about 15 verses, each verse is about one line, the word ma'roof is repeated 13 times. 13 times in 15 verses related to conflict situations. For me, the, when I, if we understand the concept of ma'roof uh, as it, it, it deserves to be understood, we will realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expecting from us to work hard on ourselves in times of conflict, to control our anger, to manage our frustration, to be careful not to insult or hurt the other while pursuing what we want to achieve in a conflict situation. As a matter of fact, that is what the whole field of conflict resolution is all about, is to try to help people to know how to deal with their conflict constructively and effectively. To the husband is appreciate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you by uh, in this marriage. Appreciate your responsibility as a man to, uh, to treat your wife with the utmost kindness and uh, to understand that you both are equal in your relationship and that uh, the main foundation of marriage in the Quran comes from Surah Al-Rum where the emphasis is on sukna mawadda wa rahma that we that we created for you mates from amongst yourselves let us meaning to live with them to to uh, cohabit with them and uh, put bit, uh, amongst you mercy and love and uh, a husband should remember that and should remember very well that uh, he is responsible to work hard to keep that love and to keep that mercy running between him and his wife and um, and to, to make sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has endowed him with responsibilities to make sure that this is happening and I suggest that for the wife as much as I said to the about the husband remember that uh, Islam is about the the peaceful cohabiting together and the mercy and love and that this is not given to you like automatically. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to strive for that. Striving happens through going through the difficult times and the good times together. And when there is difficult times, remember the mercy and love, remember the ma'roof, and make all your actions reflective of that. If you do that, while pursuing what you think is right in a conflict, nobody's saying just to give up whatever you want and let the other one win. We are not saying this, but we are saying that there is a good way of doing that. And let us not lose sight of that. Uh, I would say that for a couple going through conflict, just remember the, the notion of ma'roof and ihsan and, uh, and mawadda wa rahma, and make this the guiding principle for how you're gonna deal with conflict. It means that you, you are not gonna let anger take over. You are not gonna let selfishness take over. You are not going to let fear take over. But instead, you will look for the best inside you. And that's difficult. This is the real jihad. I always tell people this is the jihad. Because the tendency in a conflict is to let anger take takes over. And then it will control how you will uh, lash out at somebody else. Try to win at their expense no matter what. But the more you do that, the more you are causing more harm. And then the other person reacts. And then you get more upset. And the vicious cycle continues. We get to break the vicious cycles. And the breaking of the vicious cycles will happen by sticking to ma'roof, ihsan, bawadda, rahmah. And that's right in the Quran, and we need to find the ways to how to operationalize this in our everyday life.